welcome to Bent TV on Channel 31. I'm Lindsay Kuriloff and tonight I'm bringing you Face to Face. And I have the absolute pleasure in presenting two guys you've probably seen around the traps. And, uh, well, can we call you Power Poofs? Can we say that? <laughs> no? Yes? B-list. Uh, B-list. The B-list on the Power Poofs. <laughs> Please welcome fabulous Derek and Warren from Outlook Cafe and Commercial Road. How are you both, guys? Good, good. Good, good. <laughs> good. Now, firstly, just very briefly, we'll talk about you guys have a night coming up this Sunday, it is, I believe, and it's a fetish night. Can you just give us a little bit of information about that? Well, it's a bit of a fetish party to grand up in our new leather room at our um, newly renovated Outlook. So um, it's the leather room at the Outlook, actually. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a fashion show, fetish action type show happening uh -huh. um, from the beginner to the experience. So. so for the viewer at home that doesn't quite understand fetish, <laughs> give us a bit of a rundown on exactly what will be informed, what, what will fetish means to you guys and then a broader view well, of it if you will. Well, the particular fetish that we're going to be showcasing this weekend is a bit of the, um, the leather world, um, a bit of the camouflage gear mm -hmm. and um, different bits and elements of the leather world. Um, nothing too over the top so it's not going to be too scary for those that might think it might be so okay, yeah. so do you have any i mean we're in, in midst of a bit of a conflict at the moment we might draw on that but um i've noticed it like i'm doing a bit of a sin at the moment in a, in a bookshop and i've noticed that a lot of people are really getting into past dictators if you will have you got any camouflage gear in the shop at the moment and if you do have you copped any flack for it or are people rushing in to buy it basically because i'm i'm finding that whole concept a little bit of a head spin well, our camouflage is quite fun and active wear. Mm -hmm. um, we have a full range of colours, as those that will attend on Sunday night will see. Mm -hmm. I can't give out too many of the colours and details before we um, <laughs> showcase it. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, so, um, we haven't copied any flag from it. It's, um, it's designed to be a bit of a fetish and fun element, not necessarily militant type. So. Or a political state. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's all about trying to have a bit of fun. So. That, oh, that's good. And also, too, with, with fetish, like it is big, or it was really big, I believe it's sort of starting to fade a little, am I right or wrong there? Well, I think to a certain degree it is, but yeah. um, um, hopefully we can sort of rekindle it a bit because um, I think um, our fetishes is what design a part of our whole makeup, so I think if we sort of let some of that fade away, we lose a bit of ourselves, so... So, so by finishing up strictly saying leather wear and no, tying just, each other up and... No, just be comfortable as who you are. Mm -hmm. If you want to dress up in a, you know, in a frock, dress up in a frock. Um, I might do that. Then that'd be a bit of a fetish. <laughs> but no, the evening's decided to have a few interesting twists and a few elements, which is, yeah, okay. how I believe in living life, so... So how do you connect this in with Outlook? Because Outlook is a, an internet cafe, come really great meeting spot and, and all that stuff. How does it sort of tie into something that you had planned or something you happened by? Uh, something that was missing. Something that was missing. Something that was missing, maybe, probably. An element that was missing, uh, we perceived that to be. Within the community? Within the or? community, well, yeah, yeah, sort of. I mean, fetish to you is perhaps not to me, and leather camouflage, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All that sort of stuff. I mean, I've seen you marching around the, 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 the traps and you perhaps don't even need a uniform. Oh, stop. <laughs> I do. I'd like to think I do. No. <laughs> but see, one of the things about fish is, like, I've been to the Hellfire Club and, and places like that in the early days. And one of the things that really stood out to me was the absolute care that um, a top will have for a bottom. Like, there are codes and there are, there are basically rules to stick by, aren't there? Do you want to sort of expand on, on that a little bit for us? Yeah. Yeah. That, well, I guess, would be getting into perhaps a, a more extreme part of fetish, taking it to, to sort of that um, level, which is, which is fine and dandy, but we don't sort of um, view ourselves and our, uh, and our commercial <laughs> operation, that's our way to put it, <laughs> as <laughs> tailoring only to that sort of um, end, if that's the right way to put it, of, of people's fantasy and desire, whereas we sort of perhaps like to be perhaps a bit more vanilla. Middle of the road, sort of. Oh. As opposed to other types of fetish, which might be lycra or bike riding shorts, or in your case, tracky dacks, <laughs> tram burn on a Saturday morning, <laughs> Hang on a or drag, or, or, or whatever it might be. You know. So you're adding a bit of lace to the leather, basically. Well, adding the leather to the lace. Yeah. Or to lace to the leather. Yeah, to, to our workplace, which is in Commercial Road. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about Outlook. Like, how did you get that whole concept started? Because you've been there now for... Over a, a long time. Seventh, a long time. Yeah, in our seventh. Yeah. How did it come together? Yeah. 
Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, tell it's us. It's philosophical. Oh, well, I was a traveller, I guess, mm-hmm. when I was dating this one. That's the word they use then. Yeah. Dating. And um, well, it was difficult to be in a city that, that um, perhaps you arrived to from a travelling point of view, mm-hmm. when most of what went on was at the night time. But, you know, like, you don't want to see just night things. So, um, and it was a bit difficult to communicate. Like, you think, where are these little spots? And you'd get to other famous parts of the world and you think, oh, it's all here, you know, whether it be in the village in Greenwich Village or in Washington DC or in the case of the United States or in Amsterdam, certainly. And it was I mean, like, I thought, damn, you know, we've got a pretty good little city here, this Melbourne thing, and it's sort of lacking a little bit in that. And we saw an avenue, or if that's the right way to put it, where we could come out of our previous commercial backgrounds. Um, I guess there's a way of saying put your money where your mouth is, but there's a sort of, it's not about money necessarily either, it's not, there's a sort of um, growth process, I guess, involved in this and put a few concepts together, which were basically uh, about communication via the internet, and that was pretty sort of new then, and written being greeting cards, but, you know, there wasn't much around that you could sort of say, you know, I've got the hots for you outside of the bar scene and send somebody yeah. a card, or, and certainly um, all the rainbow icons and stuff like that, so... Um, yeah, so when, they, when you were open... put it together, and then, like, hair came along, and then, and somewhere to sit down and have a chat, so... Because when you opened the, the whole internet cafe concept was relatively new, yeah. and and then you put the, like, there was a cafe at the back, and I had my first rap at the Outlook, oh, you right. know, all those, all those years ago now. But one of the things was, like, when you when you looked at, at providing it, well, which you do is provide a service for the gay community, did you have any trouble finding out how to market to the gay community, or did you see that distinct need, or did you just say, well, let's give this a go, basically? trouble off getting the permits to get established without that little bit. That was a nightmare. Really? Oh. Because it's pretty sort of complex. Yeah. The, the sort of hoops you have to go through in order to have something like we have. Mm-hmm. And we licensed on top of it. And then in terms of marketing, that was, well, mm, that's yeah. <laughs> interesting. <Yeah. laughs> the media, it's interesting. Because yeah. you find the it people. difficult. One of the things is that, you know, people can talk about you know, the pink dollar and, and all the rest of it. But I've always found that the gay community or gay people are a difficult market to actually tap into. Have you found the same thing or you've managed to sort of provide the, the service for the need? Uh, to be question. Yeah, that's that's a, another whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, you can tell us. We've got another couple of minutes. Hang on. <laughs> oh, look. Uh, I think there's a big lack of everything, really. You know, it's, it's difficult to market. Who are they? Who is this target market? I guess um, commercially we ask ourselves that question. Mm-hmm. Um, and perhaps our neighbours in the, in, the, in, the, in the same strip, uh, if that's the right way to put it, with another commercial operation, have thousands through their doors that we would never sort of see. Yeah. Um, who are they? They're perhaps um, people that are associated with uh, Ben TV. Yeah. They're there. I don't know who they are, but yeah, it's difficult to market to. Well, yeah. this one of the fascinating things about our community is you can go to a midsummer summer carnival day, and not only do you see people who you haven't seen for a hundred years, but you see people that you've never ever seen before. And they're right out there. And they're right out, they're there. Right out there. And then yeah. you know you go to the Peel and you'll see a different group, and then you go to Outlook Cafe and you see a, a yeah, different certainly. group yeah. again. So. Is that one thing that you tap into, or one thing that you watch, or do you just sort of let that... Because commercial road itself is a, diff- a very difficult um, area to market, or it's sort of gone up and down. Uh, you know, like to me at the moment, it appears to be going through a bit of a slope. Am I right, or...? No, I think... I mean, what we try to do is provide a comfortable, safe environment for any and everyone within our community, and even without, you know, people that are interested to find out more about our community. Because I mean, straight people are our friends. Do you have any straight people through the doors? We have heaps of straight people. Yeah. And I would say a mix of um, straight people would would be quite high. Yeah. Um, And it's a very educational point for them because they see gay people not as freaks. They see them as good, friendly, social people. Yeah. And um, which is what we are. Basically. Yeah. And you know, we we're social. (laughs) Sometimes a little bit too social. Too social. So, so the finish thing was was (laughs) actually. Me? No, 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 no. I know I'm in all, I'm in my trumpet decks, aren't I? I'm down on a tram or something. I'll take that up with you later, Warwick. But one of the... I think he's got a something on that. But one of the things, that, again, that fascinates me about commercial road is that there is such a demographical mix. And one of the things that I really like is that during the day, you quite often see some of the older members of our community that are sitting down and, and having a coffee or, or just conversing or just doing whatever. In the night time, it's perceived to be, you know, young gay men. Yeah. Um, in their hundreds. 
thousands probably. And you know, it's it so nice. Yeah. Yeah. You see a couple of prams walking down. You think, oh, they don't know where they are. <laughs> you and your old <laughs> <laughs> So with, you've recently moved to from one side of the street to the other. Oh wow. That was big. It was a huge move. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's a better, better environment, a little bit more cosier, and um, um, still the friendly, safe staff that you always had. So. That's true. Yes. That's true. Yeah. It is. And what's, um, one thing, just before we go to the break, the, with the fetish wear, that's available upstairs. Yep. Yeah. Three days a week. Three days a week. And it's one of you, one of you guys. <laughs> it's Derek's department. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So yeah. you're actually manning the, manning the yeah. fetish wear. Yeah. Oh, so you, you're a fetishist yourself, or do you? Uh, I consider myself a leather man, yes. A bit of a leather man. Well, a, hang on there. A bear? A bit of a leather man. A bit of a leather man. Yeah. So you're not quite a bear. No, I'm not a bear. Because the bears so are really the hairy. Bear yeah, they're fantastic. Oh, okay. Because uh, you know, like, it's sort of crossover, isn't it? Yeah, I think the lesbians really do need to get into something like that. Like I don't know about bears and the like, but something definitive, <laughs> like that we can say, oh, yeah, well, I'm one of them. Anyway, we'll leave it there because we're crossing to a commercial break now. So we'll be back after the break. Support our sponsors because they support us, and we'll be back with Warren and Derek very, very shortly.